Hello, this video is about Mugget, what it is, why you'd use it, and how do you use it. So I'm going to walk through this PowerPoint presentation I set up, and I'm going to demonstrate its use on the command line. So first of all, what is Mugget? It's a tool I wrote for managing multi-repository workspaces. It, you use it on the command line, and it works with Git. So typically in multi-repository workspace, you have your top level, for example, Excalibur, or you might call it your root repository, and that represents your entire workspace. But you don't check in all your files in that repository. You check in files belonging to specific libraries and tools and etc. into other repositories in subdirectories. What Mugget allows you to do is describe where to get those subrepositories and where to put them in the workspace, and all that's described in what's called a manifest file. The manifest file is read by the tool and used to clone the individual subdirectories. Oops, clone the individual subdirectories when you first uh, are pulling it down from version control, and it also allows the tool to go and um, ask Git about if there are any changes specific to those subrepositories. Now you might ask, why do you use Mugget? Well, there are two main philosophies about large projects in version control. One is called mono repo. A lot of companies use this, and that idea is you put everything into one large monolithic repository, meaning everything in one. I'm actually a fan of what's called the multi-repo or multi-repository, where you separate your code into different repos, and you use package granularity design principles to decide how many repositories you have and what code goes into each. So granted that we're going to follow multi-repository philosophy, we need a way to manage these different repositories because Git doesn't do this intrinsically, not completely. So some of the things we need to figure out are what is the list of repositories? And then another question is where do we place them relative to the root of our workspace? And then last but not least is where we're going to get these repositories in the first place and where are we going to push any changes to? In other words, what's our upstream? So look at this design to accomplish these goals and answer these questions. And are there alternatives? Of course. But I found that I at least have problems with everything out there that I've seen. Some popular solutions are Google's repo tool, which they use for managing the Android source code. It's very similar to, to Mugget. In fact, I designed Mugget sort of inspired by the design of repo. It, uh, repo also uses a manifest file to describe repositories, where to place them, what's upstream. But unfortunately, it likes to use symbolic links, which are tough to, to handle correctly on Windows all the time. And it actually likes to relocate repos using those symbolic links. I don't really like the uh, change in structure that this requires. There are clones of Google Repo for Windows, but uh, back when I designed this, those weren't really popular or weren't really out there. So another alternative, which a lot of people do, is git submodule, which is a command in git. That allows you to have one repository refer to another as a subdirectory. The problem I have with that is the uh, re references between repositories are to specific revisions of the subdirectory and not to branches. So whenever, you're, let's say, you need to, going back to our previous slide, whenever you need to update Excalibur to get the latest version of URI, for example, you'd have to go to Excalibur and make a change to it to update the revision reference to URI to be the latest revision. On the other hand, if you use uh, Google repo or mug it, the manifest will always point to a branch and you can just say give me the latest and it will get the latest revision of the branch. So git submodule doesn't allow you to enter a branch unlike those the other tools. So that's a shortcoming of that. So how do you use Mugget? We start with either Python 2 or 3 with pip and I have Mugget checked into PyPy, so just run pip install Mugget and you'll get it installed. It's very easy. 
Then you set up your manifest file. So for example, if I look at the main.xml, this is the manifest for Excalibur right now, and it's listing two repositories, and you can kind of read it. You don't need uh, that much um, knowledge of the tool. It's sort of intuitive that each repository is an entry here, and path is where the repository is placed in our workspace. URL is the upstream URL for cloning and pushing. And the branch is what branch we're interested in getting the latest of. Now in those cases where you don't always want the latest of a branch, you can include an extra key, which is revision, that locks you or pins you down for that repository to a specific revision. And I like to do that for tools that I don't control. For example, Google's Google Test Framework, because I don't know if they might break something in their master branch, so I take a revision that I test out and I'm comfortable with, and I'll pin to that. And, you know, I'll update that if I want some newer version. But I don't want it to disrupt my normal work. So once this manifest file is set up, you select the manifest by running mugget select, and then the name of the manifest file without the .xml. Now if you had more than one manifest, selecting between them is going to be important because all the other mugget commands operate on the selected manifest. So if I hadn't yet pulled the submodules like URI and Google Test, Mugget pull would do that. If I already have pulled them, running pull again uh, update uh, brings in any updates, anything, that's, anything that was checked in upstream that I haven't yet gotten. To check to see if what we have is up to date or if we have stuff that needs to be pushed, you run Mugget status. By default, it only prints out uh, lines for repositories that have changes that we need to push, or if there are changes upstream we need to pull. If you want to get a complete list, you do dash A. Now the way you read this, the root is the whole Excalibur folder. URI and Google Test are the subdirectories. And for all three repositories, we're on the master branch. And this little hat for Google Test means we've pinned Google Test to a specific revision. And if you're not sure or if there's some symbols there you're not familiar with, you can always run status dash h and you get a little little key here, what everything means. There are other commands in Mugget that you can run. They're more specific. Briefly I'll describe them. You would run add if you added a new subdirectory that's a, a repository. And what it does is it inspects that repository, extracts the URL, and then updates the manifest for you. So you want to either clone or create the repository, the subrepository first, and then add it to using Mugget. We already did pull. A release creates a special version of the manifest that has everything pinned. So if right now I do Mugget release release, it'll actually create a file called release.xml where everything is pinned, even URI. I find that useful when I want to record a snapshot of a specific release. Like if I made version 1.0 of Excalibur, then I would uh, make a update to release.xml using Mugget release and then check that in and label that as 1.0. That allows me to get the exact version of everything that was used to build that release. So next we have or we have select, which we already, already described. Status, we described that. Update is useful if there were maybe multiple repositories added or removed since the last time you changed uh, the manifest, or if you switch branches in a, in a sub-repository. Mugget update, we can run it right now. It'll say nothing's changed. But if there were changes, it would automatically update the... the um, manifest file. For example, if we switched the revision of Google test to a different revision, then Mugget update would update the revision key in the, in the manifest file. So hopefully that gives you a, a top level overview of the tool and why you use it and how. And for more specific information, I would recommend uh, asking me on Twitch or in comments to the video or 
you can even go on to Bitbucket where you can find Mugget and post questions there. All that's good. So thank you for watching.